What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you once again how to host the exploit, the 5.05 .05 webkit exploit slash kernel exploit uh, for your PS4. However this time we're going to be looking at how to host it completely offline, so no network connection required whatsoever, at least no network connection to your local area network or to the internet, so that you can truly have the exploit offline completely. So in order to do this you are going to need to go ahead and buy this little Wi-Fi chip which is the ESP8266 module. It's only $8 so yep go ahead and buy it if you're dead set on hosting or being able to access the webkit exploit offline. So I've got mine uh, plugged into the computer. It plugs in with a you know mini USB cable so you know most phone chargers or your the charger for your PS4 controller uh, will fit so you can go ahead and plug that into uh, the computer and I've got all the software required here I'll link it all in the description for you so first thing we need to do is install the drivers for the device once you have it connected to the computer so I've got them here uh, you can go ahead and download them from this site so it's got you know different operating systems personally I've just download this one right here uh, which supports Windows 7 8 8.1 and Windows 10 so once you get the driver you want to just extract it to your desktop oh okay so maybe you should put it in a folder first put them in here okay so extract them to a folder and then what you want to do is run the 64-bit exe if you're on a 64-bit machine 86 if you're on a 32-bit machine and then we're going to go ahead and install it accept this agreement next and finish and you'll know it's installed successfully because if you head to device manager so if you just search for device manager and you go to ports com plus lpt it should show up in here it's not showing up for me i'm just going to unplug it and plug it back in there we go now it shows up so unplugged it plugged it back in so there it is there silicon labs uh, cp210x usb uart bridge com3 that's the COM port that it's on is COM3, so note that down. Uh, you may have more than one COM port. So once you have that connected and you've got the drivers installed, you can go ahead and flash it. We need to flash a bin file. Now the bin, there's different bin files for different versions of the exploit that um, the device is going to host. So you've got various different versions. I'll put a bunch of them in the description so you can flash whichever one you prefer. Uh, personally, I would recommend right now at least this KMZ version because it seems to have the most payloads so I'm gonna flash this one so I'm just gonna go ahead and again extract this to my desktop and then we have this bin file and um, there's this other one here that was recently released as well which you can try so I'll put that in the description as well and then you're also gonna need node MCU uh, flasher version 3.0 which again will be linked in the description Again, I've got the 64-bit version. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. And that'll open up the flashing utility. We're gonna select COM3, because that's the COM port that I saw in Device Manager. So that's why I told you to note that down. You may have multiple COM ports. You might only have one. So the device is on COM port 3. So I'm gonna select COM port 3. Then the Node MCU firmware is going to be the bin file that we want to flash. So I'm going to select this KMZ version. So I've selected the bin file 92166, which I think is just the write speed. So you want the fastest write speed. Um, if you have errors, you can turn down the write speed to try a slower one if you're having issues. Um, and then we're going to leave the flash mode on default. We're going to say yes, wipe all data, which is going to erase the flash. Uh, what from what's preloaded on there and load the exploit on there instead and then we're just going to go ahead and flash MCU and there we go so it erases the flash first and then it's going to start writing our bin file there we go done so once it says done you can exit out of the application and the firmware has been written to the device so now all you have to do is unplug it from the computer and plug it into your PS4. I mean, technically you could leave it plugged into the computer. The only reason we're, we're plugging it into the PS4 is to power the device. The PS4 is actually gonna connect to this device uh, through Wi-Fi. I mean, this is basically like a little Wi-Fi hotspot chip uh, that the PS4 is gonna connect to. So the only reason we need to plug it into the PS4 is just to power the chip. 
you could plug it into any other device as long as it's near the PS4 uh, and the PS4 can connect to it. So I'm just going to plug it into my PS4 now and you get a little blue light, blue LED showing up when it's for when you first plug it in. So moving on to the PS4 now, what we're going to do is connect to the device. So we're going to go to settings, network, set up an internet connection, use Wi-Fi, select custom. And then from, from your Wi-Fi devices, instead of selecting your normal router, you're going to select the little Wi-Fi chip, which will be named something to do with the exploit. So it might just be called PS4, PS4 exploit, 5.05 .05 exploit, something like that. The Wi-Fi network, it should be fairly simple and, you know, it should be have like four bars, the strongest signal strength since it's right next to your PS4. So select it. So if it's password protected, you'll find the password on the post, uh, whoever posted the uh, the bin file. It should have the password somewhere in there um, or in the zip file. So as you can see, the password for this one is hack my PS4. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in the password. So hack my PS4. And then I'm going to go ahead and press done. OK. And I should be able to set an automatic IP. So I'm going to do automatic IP. Do not specify host name. I can do automatic DNS as well. You don't have to specify a DNS. Automatic MTU. Do not use proxy. And that's it. So now if I look at my network connections, currently we don't have an IP or a subnet mask, but that should fix itself in a few seconds. There we go. So it's now filled in all the information. And now if I go to the user guide, it loads the exploit page. And that is a completely offline exploit. It's a closed loop. Uh, all we're doing is we're powering the little Wi-Fi hotspot chip and then we're connecting to it through the PS4's Wi-Fi. Uh, so there's no external connection to uh, the internet or to our local area network completely complete closed loop system going on right here and if you wanted to FTP you could technically connect another device to uh, the Wi-Fi hotspot like your computer say you have a laptop or a phone then you could connect to uh, the little Wi-Fi hotspot as a normal wireless network and then you'd be able to FTP to the PS4 and transfer files across uh, if you wanted to do that uh, otherwise, you can just load, you know, your normal payloads from here, and you'll always have access to the to it. If you just have, you know, your PS4 powering this Wi-Fi chip uh, all the time, then you'll always have access to the exploit if you have it set up this way. Now, you can also access the WebKit exploit through the internet browser as well. If you have access to the internet browser, you can also just head on here, and if you go to any domain, essentially. So, like, if we try and go to google.com then it'll load the exploit any any DNS literally anything I mean that's not even a valid link I forgot to put dot so anything just something random.com and it will take you to the exploit page and of course you can just bookmark this so just to prove that it works as well uh, let's see if we try and run this PS2 game then we don't have homebrew enabler running so it's just going to say cannot use the content and then if we go to the user guide and we load up say the homebrew enabler there we go done ps4 hen version 1.6 and i can back out try and start the game again and it runs so yeah that's basically it guys that is how you host the exploit completely offline. Uh, you only need to use the computer to program the chip. Once you've programmed the chip, you it's fine. You don't need to use the computer again uh, for anything. So you can just go ahead and plug the chip into the PS4, have it always plugged into the PS4. So every time you turn the PS4 on, that Wi-Fi network is available and the PS4 will automatically connect to it. Uh, and you'll always have access to the exploit. So. And obviously, like I said, there's different exploits, there's different bin files you can flash onto the chip, 
which will have you know a different skin on the exploit some will have more payloads than others right now this one that i showed you has the most payloads but there might be other ones in future that have more payloads that you can flash on there so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did go ahead and leave a like and subscribe and i will hopefully see you guys in the next video